celebration of Christmas is inextricably connected with the idea of giving gifts. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Nicholas, which is associated in some cultures with with gift giving. And then there's, of course, Christmas and some, some places even on Epiphany, gifts are given. And then we have the association with uh, St. Nicholas being secularized into Santa Claus. And in our country, uh, so much of our celebration of Christmas has been commercialized, as we know. And very often people celebrate the the feast and the season without even realizing what it's all about. But the story of St. Nicholas and, and his connection with gift-giving uh, goes something like this. There are actually a number of things that happened to him during his lifetime that sort of brought him into the mystery of Christmas. But uh, on one occasion, he heard of a family which was very poor, and the father had, had no dowry for his uh, three daughters, and as they got to married, uh, marrying age, uh, he decided to sell them into prostitution one by one. And as that happened, St. Nicholas, uh, in order not to embarrass the father of the family by outright publicly uh, paying the dowry, he threw the, uh, the dowry into the window uh, in the middle of the night. One by one, the daughters were, were rescued from, from this fate. And I guess also because his feast day is during Advent, somehow this got associated with Christmas itself. But somehow we intuitively understand that, that it's appropriate to give gifts on Christmas. And the, re- the reason for that is because we receive a gift at Christmas and our charity towards one another sort of helps us to, to realize what the spirit of Christmas really is. It, it can get lost in the translation, but in reality, um, the gift, of course, is Jesus. Uh, and that is the greatest of, of all gifts and the thing that we must be most grateful for. Um, the, the word grace from the Latin actually means gift. And sometimes theologians will refer to Christ as uncreated grace, at God uncreated grace, that God himself is, is a gift. And then God creates a share in his life through sanctifying grace, which we receive through baptism and the rest of the sacraments. And in fact, through baptism, uh, we receive the gift of God. And the first gift of God before sanctifying grace or, or any of the other gifts that we receive uh, at baptiz- baptism is the Holy Spirit himself. And the Holy Spirit becomes the life of our soul so that we can truly say that we are the children of God because we have God's life within us. That's the reality. And that became possible because of Christmas. So Jesus is the gift. We all we all understand that, but it's it's our our life really to prepare for that gift and give thanks to that for that gift. And and that's what we do every time we come to the Mass. That's why last night, for those who were here, I said the Mass really is like a little Christmas. Every day is Christmas because the gift comes to us every day. And preparation for the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass is like a little Advent in which we try to prepare our hearts well so that when he comes, we will be grateful. And, and the Mass itself is Thanksgiving. Eucharist means Thanksgiving. And so our whole life should be an offering of Thanksgiving to God for the gift that we had, have received. That's why many saints like St. Saint Maximilian Colby and and Padre Pio and, and many others really spent their whole day preparing for the Mass and giving thanks for the Mass. We Perhaps not all of us can go to Mass every day, but we should sort of, in the spirit of Christmas, adopt that attitude of mind. Padre Pio used to get up at 1 o'clock in the morning to prepare for, for Mass at 5 o'clock in the morning. And he would meditate and pray the rosary and then the rest of his day he would spend in thanksgiving for what he had received. It's an attitude of mind. It's, it's a spirit of the heart by which we realize in, a, in, in our prayer that in reality the thing that we can hope for most of all, the thing that we should find joy in more than anything else is the presence of Christ. And the presence of Christ is available to us 
uh, every day and always, in, in, at every moment of our life, no matter where we are, no matter what is happening to us, no matter what sufferings we are enduring, that grace is always available to us. Grace is always there. The gift is, is always present. Today is First Saturday, and uh, this is a day typically devoted to the Blessed Mother, especially in the light of her revelations at, at Fatima. And, and there at Fatima, she, she tried to, to make her children aware at a very difficult moment in time in 1917 when there was a world war going on and there was a great deal of, of, of evil threatening the world. She tried to make these little children aware and through them, the rest of us, even down to our own day, uh, that no matter what's happening, it, we're all capable of doing the most fundamental things, the things that are most pleasing to God, the things that will keep us safe in God's will and in his divine providence. Um, as, as I say, even in the worst of times and no matter who we are, Our Lady selected three little children in an obscure village of Portugal. They, they hardly, you know, they just basically heard the rumors of the war but experienced very little of it. But Our Lady chose these three little children to pray, to spend time in the presence of Christ in the Eucharist, and to do penance in order to save the world. She gave to these obscure little children God's peace plan for the world. And she promised them that if they would do what she asked, there would be peace. Uh, and and if, if, on the other hand, they did not, there would not be peace. And the peace plan is very simple. It's really a spirit of gratitude. You know, gratitude is a matter of remembering, keeping in mind what God has done for us and to recognize that, that his grace, his gift, is present in our lives no matter what is happening to us. And if we, be, if we came before the Eucharist with our sinfulness uh, and, our, and our burdens, our crosses, and everything else in our life, and abandon all of that to the Lord uh, as we receive him in the Eucharist, we would find a great deal of, of liberty and joy and peace. Uh, and that's something that our Lord wants us to have throughout our lives, not just at Christmas, because as I say, every day in reality uh, is Christmas. We need to repent of our sins uh, and open our hearts and our minds completely uh, to God and the Blessed Mother. An interesting part of the story of, of Fatima is that um, when Our Lady appeared to the three children, Lucia was the spokesperson, and, uh, and each time she would say to Our Lady, what do you want of me? Uh, who are you and what do you want of me? And, and Our Lady very early on said, come here in the first uh, apparition, as a matter of fact, she said, come here for six months and in October... I will tell you who I am and what I want. And so throughout the apparitions, each time when Lucia would kneel down before our Blessed Mother, she'd say, what do you want of me? And Our Lady would say, you know, come, keep coming and I'll tell you on, on the 13th of October. But she would also say things like, I want people to come here in procession. I want a chapel built. Um, and she said, God had sent me to, just, to establish devotion to my Immaculate Heart. So little by little, Our, Our Lady did tell her what she wanted her to do, uh, but she made it clear that, that the, the fullness of that revelation would be given on the 13th. Now, Lucia lived for, for many years uh, after the apparitions at, uh, at Fatima. They, they occurred in 1917, and Lucia died shortly uh, after the Jubilee. Um, in 2000, she, uh, she didn't die in 2000, but she released a book uh, in 2000, which she was asked to write by uh, John Paul II on, on, on the messages of Fatima. She had written earlier on in her life a memoir of the apparitions and of her early, early life, but she had never sort of spoken about what she thought the revelations at Fatima meant. So the Holy Father asked her to do that during the Jubilee year, and then it was released under his authority and, and under the authority of Cardinal Ratzinger, who, of course, is now our Pope. Um, and it was called, the book she wrote was called uh, Calls, of, Calls of the Message, Message of Fatima. And it was her meditations on what the messages meant. 
And she says something very interesting in, in this memoir. Uh, 